So I'm actually sort of associated with Berkeley, but I'm actually at the Lawrence Hall of Science, right behind, up the hill. Um, and I've been working on the Amplify Science project for the last few years, where we've been developing this kind of middle school uh, comprehensive science curriculum um, from the ground up to address the next generation science standards. So today, uh, the thing I want to talk about um, really briefly um, in a few minutes is um, what this one lesson that we learned as we were developing it, which in hindsight makes a lot of sense, but um, you might have these um, temptations to sort of bypass, and I want to make the case that you shouldn't bypass those. So um, let me um, talk through the, uh, the problem the problem that we sort of ran into, which is that we were using evidence in the sort of way that you normally think about it, where you, you're feeding evidence into your analytics and statistical models. And I want to argue that you should also be using it in, that, in the process where you develop your educational activities. So um, the situation that we sort of started with was we had the next generation science standards, our, our learning goals, and we're using that. And we had these two teams of people who are working on the same unit, let's say a unit on magnetism or something like that. And some would be developing the educational intervention, the, the activities that a student would be doing, and other people who had backgrounds more like the people in this room would be working on the assessments and the analytics. That was nice because you could parallelize things. So you could have people working with a separate expertises on separate projects. The problem is when those things came together, oftentimes we would find that things had drifted a little bit. Um, so the, um, it turns out that the analytics were staying pretty effectively locked with the uh, learning goals, but the educational experiences often would drift a little bit off target, and then we'd have to spend time sort of iterating to get those back into shape. Um, so um, we can take a step back and think about why the analytics are doing a good job and how we can leverage that. So just thinking about this from an ECD uh, framework, um, it makes sense. If you are making um, an assessment item, it is explicitly trying to tie what a student can do through evidence into what they know, the learning goals. Okay, so by its nature, when you're making an assessment item um, or when you're making evidence rules that are going to tie those things together, you're, you're doing a very sort of one-to-one -one mapping between the learning goals and student actions. Um, the, the, uh, the insight, which we, we sort of rediscovered and we should have never forgotten, was that you can use that. You can use that assessment item. You can use that sort of the, uh, the tight link between those two things then to leverage that into... The, um, the process of developing your educational activities, which is basically just you had this, this uh, concrete sort of item, this assessment item, and you had to say, okay, this kind of shared understanding of what those goals look like, the, um, the embodiment of what this, these, uh, these goals mean to us as a team, that's the thing we should be making sure students are building towards. So um, just... Uh, because it turns out that being concrete is helpful for understanding. Let's do a quick example. Um, so uh, let's say you're making a unit on magnetism. The first thing that the assessment and analytics person on our team would be doing is they would say, OK, we have all these learning goals. Let's uh, figure out some sort of pathway through those, a progress build or a learning progression or something, which allows you to um, make progress through those and make progressively more uh, sophisticated explanations as you accumulate more of these, these ideas. Um, the second thing you would do is you would then instantiate that in some sort of an assessment item. Um, a, a question which is easy to evaluate if a student is leveraging these concepts or not. And then because you now have that thing, you're able to then s say, okay, that sort of concrete um, example of a student actually doing something, we can use that then in the development process. So, Turns out it's a lot easier for a developer who's making, who's choosing what activities they want to have a student engage with. It's easier to answer the question, is this activity going to help my student answer this question? That is easier than the question of, is this activity that I'm going to have students engage with, is it going to make them learn these things? That extra step of interpretation was leading to that kind of disalignment. Um, in retrospect, that's obvious. It was not obvious when we had a, uh, a tight deadline and we needed to paralyze things. Okay, um, so the, uh, the second question you can ask in the last minute is uh, how much does this matter? The short answer is we don't know, but we, um, we can sort of make a, a quick guess at it for this talk. Um, we have a couple units that for various reasons um, we weren't able to get that sort of uh, structure in place for, and um, so we can um, really quickly compare some sort of weighted value of how the, um, the score that they end up with 
in that unit versus how much they growth versus how much they grow over the course of that unit. Um, and it's not, it's not statistically significant, but uh, it's suggestive and it's at least consistent with the idea that this actually matters a lot. Um, so it's definitely worth exploring more, but uh, I can't say that it actually is the thing that caused this, this change. Um, and I think that is it. So I'll just I'll leave this here just to summarize, and thank you for your time. How did you feel when you did that p-value and it turned out to be 0 0.051? I, was, I mean, it's a p-value, so it's not like I cared that much. No. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, so I mean, in reality, uh, yeah, I, didn't matter, I was just for the stock anyway. So I was just like, I was just curious. And um, yeah, I would say that I think that there's some effect. And I'm also sure that there's a lot of other things that are going on there. So um, I'm not sure that it's, it's explaining much of that. But I'm, but I'm pretty confident in my soul that, um, that it is having a, a significant effect in that, um, that amount, even though the data doesn't show. Yes? A ton, yes. That is an important question, and I, I skated over that. Yes. So um, the um, the development of that uh, the progress build of the learning progression, yeah, that is um, it's intimately tied with um, a bunch of things. One of which is yeah, um, what makes sense for the people who are experts in the field and are going to be sort of um, having to teach this or having to figure out how to teach this. Um, and so a big challenge that we faced was um, we want to have uh, these kind of project these problem based um, units. Um, where students are building um, progressively more sophisticated explanations, and that means there has to be this kind of um, rich problem that they're engaging with that they actually care about and that we can hit at a middle school level. Um, so yeah, um, it's important, it's a very important thing to uh, mention that yeah, um, you need to have the people who um, are thinking about those educational interventions still tied in, but just um, you try and sort of kickstart that process before they have to actually start writing those activities. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Thank you.